afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Rotoball Radio's Waiver Wire Series. I'm your host, Anthony Aniano. Happy to be with you here as we take a look at the Week 15 Waiver Wire for the week starting Monday, July 5th. Guys, don't forget, head over to rotoballer.com and check out everything we have there. The main page, the premium package, expert chats, you name it. Rotoballer.com, the place to be. Whether it's season-long or DFS formats. Football, baseball, basketball, MMA, esports, PGA, NASCAR, or sports betting. Rotoballer.com has it all. And if you sign up now, whether it's for the Major League Baseball package the rest of the way, or for the upcoming fantasy football season, sign up for the premium package, save yourself some money using the promotional code ACES, just essentially by telling them Anthony Aniano sent you. And don't forget that weekly fantasy baseball is here. If you love the strategy of season-long fantasy sports, you live for the short-term gratification of DFS, then be sure to try out our weekly fantasy baseball contests on Owner's Box. Head on over to rotoballer.com slash box and sign up today. Our friends at Owner's Box are hooking you up. All new users get up to a $500 deposit match bonus and a free Rotoballer premium pass valued at $99. We'll be hosting weekly free roll contests on Owner's Box as well, which are free to enter with lots of awesome prizes to the winners. Head on over to rotoballer.com slash box for all the details and sign up today. All right, everybody. Fourth of July weekend coming at you as we roll through Checkpoint 2. Again, time to check the standings. Where can you make up ground? Where do you have to hold on uh, by a point or two? In your 5x5 five five Roto standings. Don't worry about filling positions. Make up grounding categories, okay? If you need speed, doesn't matter where you get it from. Get those stolen bases. If you need power, wherever you can get it, get it. All right? And just your lineups accordingly. All right? We're going to take a look at some hitters around the diamond behind the plate as well. And, and see where we can possibly get some help. Remember, we use Yahoo's. Roster percentages here, try to keep it at 40% or under. Now, full disclosure, usually I record this on a Saturday uh, for release on Sunday. I am recording on a Friday, so some numbers could be a little bit different. And you'll see, especially if you check out the picture video, uh, there's a little caveat with that as well. Let's start behind the plate. And I have two catchers for us this week. Two I've mentioned in the past, going to mention them again. And the Mike Zanino of Tampa Bay Rays roller coaster continues, and right now, the ride is going up. 33% rostered. Over his last 14 days, he's hitting 333. Completely, completely not maintainable by Mike Zanino. However, the power continues to play. Five homers, nine RBIs over the last 14 days. Hitting 7th or 8th in that Tampa offense. A good offense, a great team is Tampa. Challenging uh, Boston right there with Boston. At the top of the American League East. Now, of all the players I'm mentioning today, Mike Zanino on the season has the highest OPS sitting at 859. Now, his batting average is 210, which is actually higher than you maybe think it was last year. I believe it was in the 190s, but he's on a career high pace in home runs. Career high, I believe, was 25. On the season now, he sits at 18 homers, 36 RBIs. On base percentage is only 296. Kills you in batting average. But he's a power-hitting catcher. That's what he is. And, and I love using him in DFS formats because it's a boom or bust play. And when he hits, he puts up big points. Otherwise, he goes 0-4 probably with three strikeouts. 73 strikeouts in 167 at-bats this season. But 18 home runs on the year. He's on pace to give you over 30. Uh, and at this point, he's a freebie off the waiver wire, 33% rostered. And like I said, a career-high OPS of 859. Now... Check your standings, right? Check where you are. If you don't need power, but you need batting average, then stay behind the plate and go to Reese McGuire of the Toronto Blue Jays. Now, over the last 14 days, Mike Zanino is the third-ranked catcher on Yahoo. Reese McGuire is fourth. Okay, but an entirely different player. Reese McGuire is only 6% rostered. And Reese McGuire is a batting average star right now in fantasy baseball. Over the last 14 days, no homers, two RBIs, seven runs scored. He's hitting ninth for Toronto, but he's hitting 400 
over the last 14 days. And on the season, again, the power and run production, not very sexy. A homer, five RBIs, 14 runs scored, has the ability to score some runs at the bottom of that Toronto lineup as it comes around and their big hitters come, as long as Reese McGuire keeps getting on base. And that's what he's doing. On, on the season, he's hitting 304. I say this all the time. In a year where everybody's hitting 240, you cannot ignore a 300 hitter. Reese McGuire's hitting 304 with an on base percentage of 354 on the year, OPS of 767. So do not add what is quote unquote the best catcher. Add a catcher, change your catcher for what you need. If you look at the standings and you say, I can make ground in power, then Mike Zanino is the guy. If you're holding on in batting average or trying to make a little bit of a run in batting average, Reese McGuire, the catcher you should be adding to help you going forward. All right, let's take a look at some corner and middle infield options and a lot of players here with multi-positional eligibility, but let's start with a strict corner infielder, first baseman, Ryan O'Hearn of the Kansas City Royals. Only 1% rostered on Yahoo, so he's widely available. And on the season, he's only hitting 234, six homers, 13 RBIs, but hot over the last 14 days, and his place in the batting average shows that hitting fifth or sixth most days for Kansas City. He's hitting 293 over the last 14 days with three of his six home runs and seven of his 13 RBIs. Playing more and producing is Ryan O'Hearn. Okay, his OPS on the season now is up to 701. So be mindful of him. You lose Brandon Belt. Uh, you need a corner infield option in some way, shape, or form. Okay, Ryan O'Hearn available and probably not going to cost you much in fab at all, even as a short-term fix. All right, some other players who are eligible at the corners, but also eligible around the diamond. Luis Urias of the Milwaukee Brewers. We have two Brewers to mention here today. He is the second-ranked corner infielder on Yahoo over the last 14 days, and he's only 29% rostered. On the season, this surprised me a little bit now, on the season, his batting average is 247 with a 338 on base percentage. And what shocked me was the 10 home runs, the 39 RBIs, and the 38 runs scored. He even has three stolen bases on the year. Okay, batting leadoff lately for the Brewers. Over the last 14 days, that batting average is at 340 with three of his 10 homers, 10 of his 39 RBIs. He's just producing right now, sprinkling in some steals, 10 home runs, nothing to sneeze at at this point. And that 340 batting average over the last 14 is exciting. His OPS sits at 771 on the season. Now, here's why I really like him. First, 29% rostered. And in a league riddled with injury right now, in ineffectiveness, second base, shortstop, third base eligible, middle and corner infield. So if you look at your team and you're beat up by injury or ineffectiveness, a Jeff McNeil has let you down uh, off the top of my head, Luis Urias, a former top prospect, is hitting right now, hitting with power for the season and batting average over the last 14 days. Another player, and here's my stolen base ad of the week, John Birdie of the Miami Marlins, 21% roster. Now, I talked about him in the preseason as a sleeper to add for stolen bases. In 2019, John Birdie, the last full season, had 17 stolen bases. He's a career 256 hitter, okay? With Miami this year, now he's only he's 21% rostered on Yahoo. He's eligible. He's, his eligibility is even better than Urias. Second, short, third. That means corner, middle. Also outfield eligible. You got a guy here who can give you five positions in your fantasy lineup. Got to add him to your lineup, especially if you're looking for stolen bases. Batting average on the year, 232. Last 14 days, it's at 323. On base percentage for the year is at 330. Four homers, 18 RBIs, 31 runs scored on the season. Over the last 14 days, he's hit two homers, but what I like is last 14 days, three of his seven stolen bases. Corey Dickerson's been traded, more playing time potentially as Miami figures out what their future looks like, but John Birdie on a pace for 15 to 20 stolen bases is nothing to sneeze at and certainly nothing that should be on the waiver wire. 15 to 20 steals, Five position eligibility, that needs to be in rosters, especially in a daily lineup setting. He could just fill in for guys getting days off or teams that have days off all over your fantasy lineup and give you a nice a couple of hits, a hit here or there, let's say, and mix in some stolen bases. 
Hits eighth usually in the Miami lineup. His OPS on the year is 683. Another middle infield shortstop eligible player, William Adamas of the Milwaukee Brewers. I talked about him a few weeks ago. We need to revisit him. 30% rostered and probably the highest must add on my list right now of anybody. Okay, he is the one player you have to go add because he has just been raking since leaving Tampa and going to Milwaukee. Over the last 14 days, he's hitting 320 with four of his 12 home runs and 14 of his 43 RBIs. You're talking 12 homers, 43 RBIs on the season, and it's only 30% rostered on Yahoo. I know his batting average is 238, but you need to ignore that because he's a different player since getting out of Tampa for Wanda Franco and going to Milwaukee. He's hit second or third in that Brewers lineup, okay? With, with Tampa, let's go back to the past. With Tampa now, in 41 games... He hit 197, five homers, 15 RBIs, and a 625 OPS. It was miserable. He's now played 38 games with Milwaukee. So you're looking at essentially an equal sample size. In 38 games now with Milwaukee, he's hitting 277 compared to the 197, seven homers compared to the five, 28 RBIs compared to the 15, and the OPS stood out to me. His OPS in Milwaukee is at 868. Okay, like I said, Tampa, it was only 625. So do me a favor, get Willie Adamas on your roster and get him in your lineups immediately, shortstop and middle infield eligible. A couple of outfield only eligible players to mention, Harold Ramirez of the Cleveland Indians has been hot of late. In 2019, Ramirez hit 11 home runs while with the Miami Marlins. This year, now all of a sudden getting a chance to play in Cleveland due to injury, only 5% rostered over the last 14 days. Hitting 324, five homers, seven RBIs, batting in the middle of that Cleveland lineup, four, five, six. On the season, the batting average is a respectable 282 with a 327 on base percentage. Six homers, 21 RBIs. But again, injury has put Ramirez in the lineup every day. He has produced over the last 14 days. He's got a season long OPS of 802. Don't ignore that 324. Don't ignore 282 on the season either and some power to play. Has hit double-digit home runs in the past. And finally, out of Detroit, Daz Cameron. Okay, the, the under-owned or the, the lowest percentage-owned player on my list today, uh, other than Ryan O'Hearn, actually. 4% rostered out of Detroit and having a nice little stretch with Detroit, batting 5th or 6th now in that Tiger lineup. A 718 OPS on the season. Over the last 14 days, 276, two homers, two stolen bases. Giving you like that, my Cameron used to, a little bit of power, a little bit of speed. So those two homers, six RBIs, five runs scored. On the season, only hitting 220. Batting average is climbing. Okay, like you said, 276 over the last 14. Three homers, three stolen bases. So at this point, if you're desperate for a power-speed combination, it's not going to cost you much. Only 4% rostered. He's out there and could potentially have a decent second half as Detroit sees what they have in the young Cameron uh, the rest of the way. All right, everybody, don't forget, like I said, head over to rotobola.com. Check out everything there. Follow me on Twitter at A Aniano Fantasy, and make sure you check out the Week 15 pitcher video as well right here on the Rotobola YouTube channel. Stay smart, stay safe. We'll see you next time. Have a good one, folks.